Hi, this is a quick introduction to the kinematics equations, also called the SUVAT equations, or the uniformly accelerated motion equations. Uh, keep in mind, these equations work only if our acceleration is constant, only if our acceleration is constant. There are four equations, and each one has four of our different five motion variables. Our motion variables are S, which is displacement, units of meters. U stands for initial velocity, units of meters per second. V is final velocity, also units of meters per second. A is acceleration, units of meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. And T is time, units of seconds. Notice that these first four variables are all vectors, which means we're going to have to worry about the, the sign of the vector. Usually, we use the standard Cartesian coordinate system. We say up is positive y, to the right is positive x, which means down is negative y, and to the left is negative x. Uh, and if you switch your signs on your coordinate system, that's OK, as long as you're consistent throughout the problem. So it's always a good idea to define your coordinates just at the beginning of the problem. Uh, here are our four kinematics equations that are used in IB physics. V equals u plus at. Final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Displacement, s equals ut plus 1 half at squared. This tells us our displacement is the initial velocity times time plus 1 half times the acceleration times time squared. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Final velocity squared is initial velocity squared plus 2a times displacement. And displacement equals v plus u times t over now each of these is missing one of our uh, one of our kinematics variables, one of our motion variables. So we're going to have to choose the equation uh, that has only one unknown when we're solving a particular problem. Make sure you have those equations written down and these variables written down so you can solve problems in the future. Hi, this is a video in which I'm going to introduce a problem solving strategy that's going to be useful throughout all kinds of physics. Um, and we're going to use it to solve one kinematics equation, or a uniformly accelerated motion equation. Uh, it's called the Gupper method because uh, we break each problem into five sections. Givens, where you list the variables that you know. Unknowns, where you list the variables that you don't know, that you're trying to solve for, or you don't know and might need. P is proper equations, where you write out your equations and then you solve them for your unknown variable. U is units, where we check our units. Solve for the units in our answer. And R is reasonableness. Does our answer make sense? So let's get right into it using a kinematics problem. And I've also written out the kinematics equations to the left so we can use them. OK, here's our question. A drunk driver crashes into the concrete barrier at an exit ramp head on at 15 meters per second. The crumple zone of the car is 1.1 meter long. In part A, assuming the concrete barrier does not move and the car experiences the full extent of the crumple, find the average acceleration experienced by the driver during the impact. So we're finding the average acceleration. And then part B, if the same driver smashes through 3.1 meters of traffic barrel, barrels before hitting the barrier, find the average acceleration during the impact with the barrels and the barrier. Um, Okay, so let's start with our givens. We're given, actually let's start with a diagram. Then that's kind of part of our given. We're given that we have a car and it's traveling with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. So u equals 15 meters per second. And I'm saying that's to the right. So right is positive, left is negative. And it hits a barrier and it's going to crumble. The front end crushes over a distance of uh, 1.1 meters. And at the end of that 1.1 meters, it's stopped. So we know that our final velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. So our displacement then is equal to 1.1 meters. Our final velocity is 0, and u is 15 meters per second. We could write that out explicitly as u equals positive 15 meters per second, v equals 0, s equals 
positive 1.1 meters because it is displaced forward in the forward direction. Our unknown, then, is our average acceleration, A. A is an unknown. Uh, next up is our equation. Well, we want to solve for the acceleration in this zone, average acceleration, which is constant acceleration. It's just average acceleration. So we need to pick an equation that has only one unknown. And it needs to be the unknown that we're solving for. We have u, v, s, and a. So we need to pick the equation that has u, v, s, and a, and no other unknowns except for a. There's only one equation that has those variables, and that's this one right here, the, ver the equation without time. So let's go to that equation and write it down. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now that's the equation. We need to solve it for our unknown variable a. So I subtract u squared from both sides, I get v squared equals, well, I subtract u squared from both sides, I get v squared minus u squared equals 2as. And to solve for a, I need to divide both sides by 2s. So if I divide both sides by 2s, 2s divided by 2s, s cancels. And I'm left with my final proper equation. a is equal to v squared minus u squared over 2s. Uh, now that I have the equation solved, I just plug in the numbers. Uh, we know v is 0, so 0 squared minus u is 15, 15 meters per second, 15 squared over 2 times 1.1. I plug that into a calculator, 0, 0 minus 15 squared, that whole quantity divided by parentheses 2 times 1.1. Make sure you put your denominator in parentheses. And I get negative 102.27. So to correct significant digits, I get negative 1.0 times 10 to the 2. And I think my units are going to be meters per second squared, but let's check that. Let's check that. So up top in our equation down here, we have units of, or we have a v squared, so that's meters per second, minus, or meters per second, that whole thing squared, minus meters per second, and that whole thing squared, divided by 2, which has no units, and s displacement has units of meters. So we end up up top, meters squared per second squared. Since we're subtracting the units stay the same over meters, we end up with meters per second squared. Excellent. Last of all, let's check for reasonableness. Um, oh, one thing I omitted was that negative sign there. Our final answer was uh, A equals negative 1.0 times 10 to the 2 meters per second squared. Um, it's negative because our acceleration is backwards. Are we accelerating backwards? Yes, because the wall is pushing the car backwards in the negative direction. And it's about um, 100 meters per second squared. That's about 10 times the acceleration due to gravity. Um, if you smash into a wall at about 30 miles an hour, it's going to be more acceleration than gravity. That seems reasonable to me. It passes the smell test. Uh, there's our final answer. We've got to make sure we box our final answer. And uh, there we go. That's the Gupper method using one kinematics equation. Uh, I'll solve part B in another video. Bye.